Hello and welcome to our daily devotion from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Pastor Adam Moline. Today we're going to take a look at the epistle lesson for last Sunday. It comes to us from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This particular chapter, chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, is one of the most important chapters in all of the Scripture, as if we could compare them to one another. It's important because it is the great resurrection chapter. Its whole argument is that the actions of Jesus in Holy Week and in the week of Easter and in the season following are all historic true events. They are not a lie made up or invented. They are not something that came along later. They are the truth as confessed by St. Paul and by many others. Now, let's begin with this particular chapter and looking at the time frame in which it is written. It is written in the early 50s A.D., Jesus probably is crucified either in 29 or in 33 A.D. That means that these words are written 20 years after the events that took place. Now, that might seem like a really long time, but the truth is it's not. 20 years ago, I was in high school, and I remember many of the events that took place. I remember high school football practice. I remember things that happened in class, things that I learned in class. I remember going to get stitches in my lip following a basketball game. I remember getting a concussion during football practice. I remember graduating. We had smoked hog at the meal at the party. I remember all sorts of details from 20 years ago, 22 to be exact. So it's no stretch to say when Paul is remembering 20 years earlier that it isn't impossible for him to remember the truth especially for such a big event. This event, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, is huge and very important. 20 years ago was 9-11. Do you remember the events? Do you remember where you were? Do you remember what happened in the days and weeks that followed? Of course you do. St. Paul is recounting for us that Jesus really died on the cross in accordance with what the Scripture teaches. All the Scriptures had been leading up to that moment. Jesus was buried in a tomb and raised from the dead on the third day, according to the Scriptures. All the Scriptures had been pointing forward to that since the time of Moses. St. Paul recounts that when Jesus rose from the dead, he talked to actual people many of whom at the time Paul wrote in the early 50s A.D., you could still go and talk to and ask them, 
Did you actually see Jesus risen from the dead? And they would say, yes. Jesus appeared, Paul says, first to Cephas, that is, St. Peter. Surely we would expect St. Peter to say that Jesus rose from the dead. Can we count him as reliable? Well, if you don't trust him, Jesus also appeared to the twelve apostles. Now we have twelve witnesses of Christ's resurrection. And if you don't believe those twelve, St. Paul goes on and says he also appeared to five hundred brothers. At one time, he came to a church service where Christians were gathered together and showed himself to them as alive. And you can go and ask them, St. Paul says. Of course, now they all are asleep. But just to be completely clear, we have four eyewitness accounts in the scriptures from those eyewitnesses, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that have been written down so that you can get a first-person eyewitness account to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Then Jesus appeared to James, St. Paul says. Now here's where it begins to get interesting. The people that Jesus appeared to before this that Paul mentioned, all of them were Christians. They were disciples. They were followers of Christ. But when we get to James, all of a sudden we see a change. Do you remember what the brothers of Jesus said about his preaching and teaching? Do you remember how they tried to get him to be quiet? Do you remember how it says in the scriptures that they did not believe in him? They merely saw him as their brother. James was one of those. And yet Christ appeared to him, and James converted and became a pastor, in fact, preaching the message of good news that Jesus had been raised from the dead. And then, last of all, St. Paul says, Jesus appeared to me, the least of the apostles. Why is this a big deal? St. Paul had been arresting Christians. St. Paul stood by and watched as Christians were put to death. He guarded the cloaks of the people who took them off to throw rocks at Christians, specifically St. Stephen. You can read about that in the book of Acts. But when St. Paul saw Jesus resurrected alive on the road to Damascus and in the time following, St. Paul converted. He went from an enemy to Christ to an advocate for the resurrection of Christ. These people, all recorded for us in 1 Corinthians 15, saw Jesus with their own eyes, that he really, truly had lived, died, and rose from the dead. It is a historically verifiable event, historically true. This is so important for us as Christians. It's not just a fable. It's not just a moral story. It's not just some sort of nice story that makes us feel good. What happened to Christ is real. It is true. It is founded in our actual world, in a time and in a place with actual people who saw it happen. It is just as real as the attack on Pearl Harbor or the defenestration in Prague that begun the Thirty Years' War, or the battles in England that led to the Norman Conquest, or the collapse of the Western Roman Empire and the sack of Rome, or Caesar invading Gaul and bringing it into the Roman Empire. All of these historic events are real, and so, too, is what happened to Christ. Our faith is a faith founded in history, a faith founded in truth, a faith that when you study it and learn about it cannot be denied. If you want to learn more about this particular 
chapter, I would encourage you to look at Gary Habermas. This is his doctoral thesis, to use these events in history as minimum facts that point to the truth of our faith. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen.